Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 9 of Photoshop Quick Tips. Yesterday, I did a Lightroom Quick Tips, episode 63, where I showed you how to get a porcelain skin look on your model that was actually presented by Scott Kelby on his blog. I had a request from one of my viewers asking me if I do a video on it. I mentioned in that video that I never get that look using Lightroom. I use Photoshop and I mentioned that I'll do a video on how to do it in Photoshop or at least how I do it in Photoshop. And I was looking over at Scott Kelby's blog and he does it slightly different than I do. Uh, but I'm going to show you the way I do it. Um, so what we did is yesterday, here's the image that we actually did in Lightroom yesterday in episode 63 of Lightroom Quick Tips. You see it kind of has this um, porcelain look. And I mentioned that that was a very popular look, look in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, but it's still around today. And Lindsay Adler is pretty much known for doing this. She's a, a great uh, photographer in the New York City area. And she does this look quite often. Uh, I, in my professional uh, business, I've actually only had to do this look once. I had an art director where I was doing an ad campaign for an optical place, and they wanted this minimalist uh, kind of gestalt look to the, to the, the the uh, place, and I had to do this look. I'm not a big fan of it myself, but a lot of people are, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we have is the exact same image. This is the actual processed image that I did in Lightroom, and then this is the unprocessed image. I just have a virtual copy of it. So we're going to send this directly over into Photoshop, and we're just going to do a copy with Lightroom adjustments, even though I didn't do any adjustments on this image. So we're going to send it over into Photoshop, and it's pretty easy to do, uh, the way I do it at least. Uh, I'm just going to make a copy of the background layer by hitting Command J. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J. The next thing I do is I go up to Filter and I get a Camera Raw filter. And this part is kind of similar to what um, Scott Kelby did. First of all, we're going to go to the HSL Grayscale uh, tab here and I mentioned it's similar to what he did in Lightroom is what I'm doing with this camera raw filter is I go to the saturation tab and I take oranges all the way down and when I look at it too I kind of sometimes see some little like color in there and usually if I take yellows down a little bit that'll take care of that as well then I go over to the luminance tab and I'll put oranges up and now um, Kelby's blog uh, he mentioned that the photographer he got it from was Calvin Hollywood, and Kev Calvin Hollywood puts that all the way to the top like that. I typically won't do that. I will bring it up maybe, you know, till I think it looks decent about there. So I'm done with that. That's pretty much the look. And when you click OK, it'll apply it. Now, the problem I mentioned in the Lightroom video is that it also will affect anything else in the image. So if I turn that layer off, you could see how it affected her red hat and her red sweater. And if she was in a busy scene with the background, it would affect anything that was orange or yellow in the background as well, or red for that matter. So typically you don't want that to happen. So what I do now is I have this and I will put a mask here. And what I'll do is I'll hold the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. I'll hold that in when I click on the Add Layer Mask icon. And it will put a black layer mask. Now you can see it has hidden the, the entire effect. So it's as though I didn't do anything. But what I'll do now is I'll get a brush. I'll hit the B key on my keyboard for a brush. And I want to get a brush that is relatively hard. Um, you know, maybe not completely, you know, but just a little bit like that. That's good. And we're going to be painting on the layer mask. So make sure you're clicked on the mask, not on the image itself. So on the mask. And we're going to paint in white because white will reveal what is behind the mask. So we're going to hit the X key on the keyboard. We want white in the foreground here. So we're going to hit the X key on the keyboard.
So we're going to be painting in white. I'm going to get a bigger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And you'll see as when I paint, we're getting the effect come through. Now, right now, I'm just going to kind of go very quickly. Normally, I take my time. And also, uh, typically, I would use a Wacom tablet to do this. But I'm at home at the moment, and my tablet is in my studio. So I'm using a mouse. So just bear with me. So what we're going to do is paint in the effect on her face. And I'll be varying the size of my brush as I come in here. And what I want to do is I want to avoid her eyes and her lips. I already kind of uh, spilled over on both, but we'll fix that in a minute. So we'll come in and come around here like that. Make sure we got her fingers. And again, I'm doing it very quickly. If I was doing this for a client, I would probably take at least a half hour to make sure this was perfect. Well, maybe not a half hour. Depends. Depends how busy the background is and everything else around her. Now get a smaller one to do around her eyes because I really don't want to get the white of her eyes I just want to get all around it though maybe in there a little bit okay now you can see I spilled over on her lips and we don't want that so what we're gonna do is once I get her entire finger painted down in here and what we're going to do is we're just going to switch and put black in the foreground on this color swatch by hitting the X key so we swapped them and then I could come in here and I could paint in her lips a little better now if I was actually planning this shoot to do uh, this look which I wasn't but if I wanted to actually do this look, when I photographed her, I would have had our makeup person um, put on like bright red lipstick that was probably the same shade as her hat and sweater uh, to really bring out her lips. But this shoot wasn't really for that porcelain look. Um, so, you know, that gives you an idea. Now, I did a really obviously kind of a hack job, but you an idea what we're trying to do here so I'm going to I missed a big spot over here I'm sorry the perfectionist in me still won't let me rush through it too much even though I missed a ton of spots what you could do too is you could hold the alt or option key in while you click on the layer mask itself and you'll actually see the mask and then any like glaring spots you might have missed you could come in here and paint those away like that then you would hold the alter option key again and click on the mask again and you'll be back to your original image so let's just say that's good enough so i just am going to quit photoshop like that and it's going to ask me to save it i'll save it so it'll save the image it'll bring us back into lightroom and there is the image that I did in Photoshop. And as you can see here, here's the image we did in Lightroom yesterday. And you can see how just doing it in Lightroom, it really did affect her sweater and hat, her lips. If, if I had a background different than just um, the plain white background that I used, it would have uh, affected anything in the background as well. So that's why if I were to do this, look I would prefer to do it in Photoshop you could see that it just in my opinion does a better job so that's it for episode 9 of Photoshop quick tips thank you everyone that watches my videos I truly do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon